Hey everybody, this video is going to be on gram-positive cocci bacteria. <clears throat> so there's two different types that we're going to cover. This lecture though is only going to be covering Staphylococcus. But the two gram-positive cocci that we'll cover are Staphylococcus and in the next video I'll do Streptococcus. The main way you distinguish between these two bugs is uh, by a catalase test. So Staphylococcus are going to be catalase positive and Streptococcus are going to be catalase negative. So here are the three main uh, staph bugs that you'll see on the exam. Overwhelming majority of questions are going to be on this one right here, Staph aureus, and then there's going to be Staph epidermidis, and then Staph saprophyticus. So most of the lecture is going to be focusing on Staph aureus because that's where most of the questions come from. So Staph aureus is going to be coagulase positive. Now notice we're moving on to something different than catalase here. So catalase is to distinguish what type of gram-positive cocci bacteria you have. So catalase is the way you distinguish between those two. And then the test to distinguish between Staphylococcus is coagulase. So we'll cover that in a uh, slide coming up. Staph epidermidis, I'm not going to really talk much about this because the only thing that's usually covered is that it's a nosocomial um, infection due to biofilms. It grows on valves and joint replacements and catheters and hospitals and it's coagulase negative. Saprophyticus is the most common cause of UTI, is a common cause of UTI. And you'll see, if you see Saprophyticus on an exam, it's usually dealing with, uh, in some way, testing about a knowledge of it causing urinary tract infections, and it's coagulase negative. So here's a note. All staph are catalase positive, but not all staph are coagulase positive. So be careful of coagulase versus catalase. So pay attention to that. And I have a chart or a table coming up yeah, right here to distinguish between that. So catalase breaks down hydrogen peroxide. So all staph are catalase positive. So you might come across a question that asks something like, which organism is a gram-positive cocci that is catalase positive? And so you'd have to be able to distinguish between strep and staph in that case. So here we have staph aureus epidermidis, and saprophyticus. So we see that all staph are catalase positive. And remember, catalase breaks down hydrogen peroxide. Now coagulase is a different story. Only staph aureus is going to be, a grant, is going to be coagulase positive, and the other two are coagulase negative. And then I wrote over here, the main thing that we're going to associate with staph aureus is skin. Epidermidis is nosocomial infections, and then saprophyticus is urinary tract infections. And then I have the same chart, but I added strep here, just so that you can see catalase. In this case, strep is catalase negative. And then we don't distinguish with coagulase. So catalase is going to distinguish staph from strep, but coagulase is going to distinguish staph from staph in the case of Staph aureus being positive. Okay, we're gonna move on to just a couple generic descriptors of Staphylococcus. So they are grape-like in shape. The, the actual shape of the bacteria is grape-like. It's the bacteria most commonly found on the skin. The most common manifestation of Staph infections in humans is a cutaneous abscess. It's resistant to penicillin it frequently develops uh, resistance to penicillin, gains resistance to penicillin by having an enzyme called beta-lactamase that attacks penicillin. So this is the main uh, thing we want to remember about its resistance to penicillin, beta-lactamase. And then coagulase. Again, Staph aureus is coagulase positive, and that's the main test to ID uh, to distinguish Staph from Staph. And the other two are coagulase negative. So now we're going to focus on Staph aureus. It's gram-positive. It's clustered. It's the most common 
cause of separative infections involving the skin, joints, and bones. And remember from the earlier slide, you know, separative like pus, and here we have a cutaneous abscess. Again, we're thinking about anything involving the skin, dealing with staph. So osteomyelitis is most commonly caused by uh, staph aureus. So that might be a type of question you'd have, and then you might have like a, a staph aureus in the answer, you might have a strep in the answer, and you'd want to go with a staph. It causes acute bacterial endocarditis and MRSA. The SA in MRSA is actually staph aureus. It causes toxic shock syndrome, food poisoning, and you know, I don't want you to be overwhelmed by this slide because there's a lot of stuff here, and we'll go over you know a lot of these things in the coming slides. Catalase positive, coagulase positive, resistant to penicillin, you know, that beta lactamase that we talked about, and then protein A. Okay, so it's kind of beating a dead horse here, but you know, it's coagulase positive, and you'll see this this kind of question on the exam, so you really have to have this understood. Other staphylococcus are going to be coagulase negative. Coagulase test is the prime criterion for classifying a bug as staph aureus. Okay, it's the golden bug. So aureus is Latin for golden. So uh, that comes from the fact that it, it's a golden colored colony. So we're going to think of staph aureus as the golden bug. And gold is a positive thing. And it's coagulase positive.